Hey y'all, what's up? Your girl G here. Welcome back to my channel. I want to start off by apologizing you guys. I low-key went MIA for kind of a whole week. So I wanted to start off saying my bad. I apologize. I did not mean to miss a whole week. But your girl was um on auntie duty babysitting. My sister went to Las Vegas with her husband. So I was watching three kids. And so you can imagine it's kind of hard to film when you got three kids, one of them being a two-year-old, and you're trying to keep a two-year-old alive. Yeah, you can't keep your eyes off from off of them for two minutes because next thing you know, they's trying to stick stuff in the sink. They trying to open up bottles, pour stuff everywhere, trying to paint the toenails, and they painting the couch. Like you know, it's too much. Okay, and this is one of the moments. This, this is definitely one of the moments that I realized I am so glad. Okay, I'm so glad that I have not produced now offspring that I gotta be responsible for. Okay, Auntie just might be suiting me real good right now auntie just might be my permanent role not gonna lie um but yeah so that's why i was kind of you know just 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 just, just kind of a little preoccupied but we're gonna hop back into things because there's a lot to talk about put a ring on it we are starting with that and then we are gonna go into love and marriage huntsville love and marriage dc and because so much stuff happened as well um with the the scots versus holtz then now I have something to talk about in a part of the review as well. So let's not drag it out. Let's go ahead and hop in to put a ring on it so we can catch up and everything. And y'all drop down in the comments and tell me what you feel about the episodes, okay? So put a ring on it, you guys. Put a ring on it. We basically open up with everybody still being in the counseling session. And uh, Otis deciding that he wants to take Cherie on a third date simply because uh, Charlie decided she was going to go on her little closure date. Um, you know, with good old Odell Beckham, you know, great value version, okay? Uh, and so he was feeling some type of way, especially in the fact that he knows old dude is determined to try to take his woman from him. And Otto, and Otis is still stuck on the fact that, you know, he kind of feels like the dude thinks that she's weak. And weak in the terms of, like, giving off energy like, oh, you can be, you know, you could get took. Or this energy of, I know I can fuck you. Like, yo nigga ain't got no chance type stuff. And that really pissed Otis off. And I do think Charlie is basically doing everything to get under good old Otis's skin. And I'm here for every minute of it. Otis definitely needs a reality check. He clearly has mommy issues. He's narcissistic AF. Not just narcissistic, but just narcissistic AF. Um... And Charlie, girl, you are going to be living a lifetime of constantly trying to appease him and try to get his approval from him. And baby, he's not going to give it to you. That's the cycle. That's 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 the gimme gotcha that men know how to do. As long as I keep her in the cycle of trying to please me, then she ain't going nowhere, right? If she's always stuck in the cycle of trying to make, you know, like Charlie said to Otis one time, you know, I would really like to hear him say that he is proud of me a lot more. And so it's just like she's doing things for the approval of Otis or the or the not trying to get disapproval from him. And like, girl, that's not what you need to be doing. Like, it's not your do job to try to make your, your man proud. Like, he's not your daddy by any means. Like, what? But nonetheless, um, everybody's got their dates situated. And so we have... Oh, and, and their task. Basically, Fonzo has a task of finally hitting up baby mama and is supposed to be letting her know, bitch, I got a woman and her name is Shay and she gonna be my life and that's that, right? Because Shay's been trying to get this man to understand, like, I cannot get with you if you are not taking it serious that you want the families to be molded together. Um, so... There's something in the freezer. Just go in the freezer and pick something out. Man, don't ask about the muffins. Lord Jesus, see? See what I gotta deal with? See, just... Tell them one thing and ask about another. God dang killing me with these god dang muffins. Um, uh, what was I talking about? Um, damn, lost my train of thought. Uh, oh, Fonzo. Fonzo was tasked with calling the baby mama. Shay said, let it be known that I can't, I can't marry you if I can't even be cool with your, your baby moms and your mom. And it's very obvious that the mom is taking on the role of like, oh, Shay's basically this woman that's like interjecting herself in my son and, you know, my grandchild's life and type stuff like that. So I'd be very interested to see like we, there really should have been a sit down with either the mom and Shay or the mom 
uh, and Fonzo on the show. I really felt like that was something that should have been, you know, done. But nonetheless, we see Charlena go on her date with Mr. Um, Great Value Oda Beckham, Dollar Tree version. And she's basically giving him the, you know, it was fun getting to know you. You know, you definitely showed me new sides of myself. I definitely appreciate that. But, you know, I'm going to work on things with Otis. We've been together for three years and that's just not something, you know, you throw away. Basically, she basically gave him the, you know, it was fun while it lasted talk. He understood. He, you know, he still feels like, huh, give me a call. Like when anything mess up, give me a call. Okay. And so then we see Otis, he goes on his date with Cherie. And this is where another thing I have a problem with Otis, his, he just simply has this way of being so dismissive in the most rude way, passive aggressive way possible. First of all, you've been very dismissive with her since the second date. The first date was kind of, uh, you know, you were talking a little bit, but the second and third date, like those dates were basically a waste. You could tell the production was just needing basically Otis to film since Charlena was going on a date. We're going to put you on a date with Cherie. She was asking him questions. He was ignoring her. It was just very like, Cherie, if it was me, I'd be like, check please. I'll pay for it. Don't even worry about it. Bye. Bye, nigga. Like it was so pointless. Otis was just like, just rude. That's the only word I can think about it. Um... So then we move on to uh, Fonzo, right? Or no, Shay and Fonzo got on a date. Fonzo put on his best, you know, Shay put on her best. And <laughs> and they got on a date and she's just talking to Fonzo. Like, oh, oh my God, you know, you actually picked me for my last date. And he was like, yeah, of course I did. You know, I love you. You know, I, you know, I, I honestly wouldn't know what I would do without you. Fonzo's laid it on thick, y'all. He is laid it on thick <laughs> because she thick. Th 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 thick okay he was laying on thick with three c's because he's not he's really trying to make sure he keeps shay around to be his bottom bitch basically um but she was just like you know there's so many things i want out of you fonzo i'm serious about you know the family he's like you know i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it she's like yeah you know got that one call to make you know it's necessary he was like yeah he's like i know i realize i messed up and and you know, she was like, oh, would you miss me? Or something like that. She was like, would you miss me? He was like, yeah, I'd miss you. He was like, you know, being for real, like, I, if, if you left me, I, I don't think I, I would know what to do. You know, I, I he was like, I, I would lose myself, you know? And so she actually started getting a little emotional because he was saying some, uh, what I'm gonna call sweet nothings. I think he wants to believe himself that like, oh my God, like he can do good for Shay. And I see Fonzo trying but see, the thing is, niggas like Fonzo, they'll do good for three months just to fuck up for the next six months, right? And then they'll use the three months of good pattern, basically, like, I'm gonna earn up some cool points so when I do fuck up, I can be like, but baby, you know, like, we were doing so good, you know, look what I was able, I was, you know, it's always like, it's always a build up, like, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, but the next time you go on tour with Rick Ross and you accidentally, you know, accidentally fall off the stage into some coochie then all of a sudden it's just like you know I don't I don't I don't know I don't know I don't know that that was Fonzo's thing I, I don't know I don't know what I do what am I supposed to do I don't know like that was his word all god dang season I, I don't know what am I supposed to do like what what did, what did I do nothing that's the god dang problem nothing um so yeah so they're basically having like cute little moment or whatnot you know it is what it is um they definitely are of the couples, the ones that's trying to make it work out the most, who I feel like they actually could. Of everybody, Shay and Fonzo, to me, have the... They have the easiest fix of all of them because Fonzo's issues is just simply is that he's a horrible communicator and he just can't keep his dick in his pants. Like, those are things in comparison to dealing with a narcissist um like Otis and somebody who's very heavily misogynistic and then the Kenneths of the world the entitled what was me black man I've been sleeping on your couch and the only thing I can do real good is drop fine dining and dick like those those two in comparison to how Fonzo is like I would take the Fonzo struggle over those two any day um and so basically they had a cute little day and Shay's gonna she's just gonna sop it all up because she really wants things to work with Fonzo um, so we do see the scene where he makes the call 
And he basically tells the baby mama, like, you know, I, I do want to apologize for the things that were done. I realized, you know, I it, it was on me to make things better. And I, I really should have communicated better. You know, you are my baby moms. And so, you know, you, you are of value to me. He basically repeated what Dr. Nicole to tell him, like, you need to explain to your baby mama, like, she's of value to you. You know, you take care of my son. We had this child together. We have history together. So even though we are in a relationship uh, to a different capacity, you know, we still need to maintain just a mutual respect for each other. Um, and so, um, basically the baby mama wouldn't have it in. She, she was on Fonzo's ears, okay? It was simply like, nigga, F you. Like, I done, basically, I done been with the stuff with you, through the trenches with you, got a baby with you. Then it's like, to her, she feels like, oh, now all of a sudden this random ass bitch comes into play. And you go ghost on me, basically. I do feel like the way Fonzo was putting it, when he was talking to Dr. Nicole that, or talking to Shay that one time, he was like, because she was like, when did it end? And he was like, I mean, if you ask me, like, it ended here. Like, he basically did the phase out, the slow ghost. He didn't just cut her off. Like, it was the slow ghost where he just stopped replying to text messages little by little, stopped going out with her little by little, and the next thing you know, boom. Hello, motherfucker, I got a, a fiance, you know, type shit, you know, and so I'm pretty sure that's what pissed the baby mama off. Then on top of that, we find out that the baby moms, um, or that Shay ended up seeing, uh, meeting the son before meeting the baby moms. And that's where you definitely fuck up because I do feel like that is just a general rule that most people know, like, hey... If you bring in somebody around my child, make sure I know who they are as a parent and I have some type of, you know, um, communication, notification, you know, I need to know the bitch that's going to be around my kid, period. Like, and you didn't do that. And he explained that. And so now the baby mama just feels like, well, yeah, you're like, you moved on, you know, you may be healed, but here I am. I'm still broken. And it's just kind of like, girl, you, Fonzo Loki found the same girl, just in different body form which is um, a girl that's able to try to read into things that aren't there. Like, Fonzo, yeah, he goes on vacation with you. Fonzo, yeah, he may come by the house. I really honestly feel like that Shay and Baby Mamas was fucking Fonzo at the same damn time. It's giving real timelines are starting to cross. And I really feel like that's why he was trying his hardest to keep them away from each other. Because I do think if these hoes sat down and started looking at timestamps, the math wouldn't be mathing. The math would not be mathing, okay? And I think that's why he's trying to keep them apart. And then he also has this thing of like, oh, but my mama, you know, she like the baby mama. Like, you're not, a, you're not making your mom have to respect Shay by any means necessary. You're not telling your mom, look. I'm a grown ass man. This is a woman I see myself with and I get you have a relationship with my baby moms, but it's going to have to say that. Like, it's going to just have to be, look, you, you, the child, you, the mother of my grandchild. And I love you as the mother of my grandchild. Not, oh, I love you as the woman who's going to end up with my son one day once he gets done, you know, fucking around with these little bitches, you know, that's what it's really giving. Um, so yeah, she basically lit Fonzo a new one. He trying, he tried his god darn best. But Fonzo, this is what happens when you let shit simmer for too long and you don't handle your responsibilities and especially on the lack of a communication. Like, you a grown-ass man, act like it, okay? So then, y'all, let's go ahead and get to the... Hoo -hoo, to watch a black man in the wild. I tell ya, I tell ya. I saw this damn scene with Kenneth and Shorty and was just in disbelief. I was gobsmacked. I was just... I know this nigga didn't. Like, I know this nigga and lost his mind. So let's get into it. So basically, Dr. Nicole set up a, kind of like an intimacy cuddling yoga-ish. You know, they kind of have those sessions, like couple, couple cuddle sessions or whatever. And so Shorty hasn't done that with Kenneth in a long time. They've been in a bad spot. You know, communication hasn't been the greatest. So they haven't really necessarily been sharing intimacy lately. So Shorty appreciated it for that much for as short as possible because they start cuddling and stuff you know they hug and you know they just kind of just a little bit reminiscent of you know the the chemistry they had and then that shit switched so fast because shorty tired of this bull she she is tired of the 
the false hopes and dreams with Kenneth. Like, the dating niggas for potential. Like, it's getting y'all nowhere. Like, ladies, potential is getting you nowhere. Understand, there are more women not making it with niggas with potential than women that are. So, the, if you know those odds, why would you jump into that? Right? And so, now Shorty's talking to Kenneth. And she was like, look, Shorty. I mean, he, she was like, look, Ken, like... Tell me what your thoughts are. Like, do you do you feel like this is forced? Like, tell me that. Do you feel like this is forced? And he really was not trying to get into it, baby, baby. You know, like, I just see myself with you, you know. And it started off with, you know, we really need to have this conversation, you know, in life. Like, because I see myself going somewhere. And I feel like I've given you the opportunity. Because come to find out, I did, on the show, I completely missed this. She talked to, I remember it popped in my mind. I remember now that the mom was like, remember you tried to give him a year to save up money so y'all could get a house together. And he didn't even do that. So you've given him enough time. Kenneth, you've had enough time to prove to Shorty that, hey, look, if you say you need something from me, whether it be, you know, financially, like just being somebody who's dependable. Nigga, you not that. You not. You not. I'm sorry, Kenneth. You want to take her as attacking you, but the only reason you're taking it as somebody's attacking you is because you don't like what the f you're hearing, period. And you know it's the truth. And so now Shorty's basically like, um, okay, Kenneth, like, what's going on with us? What's for the future? You know, well, I'm just going to let you know, baby. Like, you know, you uh, you ain't even got to worry about me. I'm going to do everything for you. You know, so financially, you know, you can just wipe that out. And so she's like, okay, how do you plan on doing that? crickets like how do you plan on knocking out financial can can you give me a play-by-play -play? can you give me a, a plan book can you give me something hell scratch like scratch paper with just some something on it and he could and it pissed him off that she was getting right to that point of like nigga what is it or what what kenneth what do you want to do with your life skinny fat man fool blogger slash strip club security guard slash i'm an entrepreneur i'm, I'm a i call them people non nonpreneurs that uh, non, non entrepreneurs who be saying i do shit but really you don't you know um it really pissed him off that she was like you know you what are we doing kenneth and so he was like, baby, we, we in this relationship together. Like, you done stuck beside me this long. And now all of a sudden, if you feel like I ain't, you know, I ain't good for you, all this type of stuff. And so she was like, no, I'm just saying, like, look, if I'm planning my life with you, I need you to show me something. So what is the plan in particular? And then, then he started to switch and do the, man, let, let me talk. Like, let, just wait, let me finish first, you know? Like, look, what I need from you, look, look, girl, all I need for you, what I'm looking for in a woman is for me to come in, you know, from a hard day work and see them pretty eyes looking at me, telling me that, you know, uh, the world is mine, you know, showing me that everything going to be all right. I just need to know I can come in here and lay my, you know, lay my head on you after coming in. And then it would just, it literally wrote itself. When he said it, I just went, no, this nigga didn't. He did not pull the card. He tried to pull the, the, the draw for, you know, the trump card of the, I just need to come in and know that you support me after getting beat down by the man. And when he said that, I was like, niggas, just, I just need to come in and know that you won't support me after being, you know, outside and get, working hard out there against the man. It's the man that beats me down. So let me come home and beat down on you because I feel better after getting my shit handed to me by the world. That's what basically what men in particular, black men in particular want. It's, oh, I'm fighting the man out there. So what's left for me to come home is for somebody to try to uplift me. And bitch, I can't uplift you. Women are responsible for, you know, the uplifting of your self-worth, the uplifting of your motivation and stuff like that. Like you got to do that on your own. And that's what a lot of women, unfortunately, don't understand is, yeah, this man is telling you, oh, I'm going to do this, this and this. And he, he himself has to truly believe he's capable of doing it and has done the work to know that he's motivated to do these things. And before y'all get with men, allow them to show you before you didn't commit your life to somebody, moved in with them, they need to have shown you first, hey, this is a task I told you I was going to do. And that nigga better complete it before you try and sign your name on the dotted line or try to marry a man because he ain't completing it 
before you got married or before kids, it certainly ain't gonna happen after. And then that legacy bullshit, okay? The legacy trap, the legacy con, it's, it's a trap. That, that's, I'm gonna make a video on that. That legacy talk is a full cap trap. It is the easiest way for a nigga to try to get a woman to procreate with him. Baby, we gonna leave a legacy, right? 30, 30 kids ass niggas out here. I got a legacy. Really? Do you? Do y'all know what legacy means? Y'all know what legacy means? Legacy means that my name opens doors before I even get in the building, right? Legacy means that I get first dibs. Legacy means my name is already on the poster and I ain't even nowhere in sight, you know? Legacy means you don't even need to know my first name. My last name says it all. Kenneth, where, where, where is that at? Shorty, she gonna be good. So when that happens and Shorty's not giving in to his little bullshit, you know, trying to, he's just trying to throw whatever can stick and he trying to change it into an emotional conversation versus a logistic conversation because he know he can't stick with her on the, the facts of nigga, you ain't got nothing going on. So the next day, the cameras are back and Kenneth is fully loaded. Baby, when I tell you he was over there with a bottle just just drinking like a hamster drinking like a fish and, and shorty was like here and she's like it just switched like he, she was like a switch went off and this new kenneth here is acting he is showing his pure old light skin ass okay and he sits down with her he was like man you know i'm thinking of marriage i could never get married to a woman like you because you weak but what he said because you weak and i was like the fuck weak she's weak She's weak. Well, look how you're acting, but she's weak. And what I really appreciated about this was the fact that Shorty let him make a fool of himself. Like, I'm going to just sit here and I'm going to just... Here, here's the world. Ken, world, meet Kenneth. Like, just be quiet and let a man... If you give somebody enough rope, they'll hang themselves. And that's exactly what Kenneth did. He talking about, I can never get married to a woman like you. You wouldn't even my flavor anyways. I know, I know my friends who really, really know me, who know, really know Kenneth, was looking at me like, man, this ain't even you, bro. This ain't even you. Like, he was doing everything trying to de demean her, degrade her. And, of course, there are people want to have this conversation of like, oh, you know, Shorty ain't innocent. I, like, hey, 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 hey. Now, if there's one thing from most people that I've watched review the show, we've all essentially have said that Shorty, bitch, you pick him. And like she said, when she called Kenneth a child, he was like, well, you pick this child. And it was kind of like, touche, because bitch, you did. A lot of women, this is one of them situations, like you can't keep complaining if you let that nigga walk back in the door, if you let that nigga fuck again. Like at that point, like the complaining, it's either you're going to shut up and deal with it or you're going to stop complaining, you know? And so, Shorty, at this point, I think, like, she had enough because she was like, look, Kenneth, if this is how you really feel, I'm really all these horrible things, you know, you, I wasn't really your flavor, then is this the exit conversation? Uh, is this our exit conversation? And when she, when Kenneth heard that, that nigga perked up, like, exit, why we gotta exit? Then it was like, oh, oh, okay, oh, oh, the, the kitchen got a little too hot, you done turned the stove on and burnt your own damn hand, huh? So now it turned into, why well, I gotta be an exit? And it's like, oh, okay. Oh, now that it hit reality. But I think because he had already gone this far, he realized, bitch, I might as well see it to the end. So now he starts giving off. Bitch, it, it could have been a whole Tyler Perry scene. The way he was talking, it was just like, it was literally a scene out of a Tyler Perry movie. The way he said it was just like, I'm a good black man. You know, I'm smart. I'm talented, you know? He was like, I'm smart, I'm talented. I, I'ma be somebody. It was just kind of like, did Tyler Perry write this shit? Like, the fuck? This nigga on the balcony, he doing cartwheels, drunk and stuff. And so Shorty was like, yeah, this is you, Kenneth. You were a child. I should've never did this shit anyways. Every time I try to kick you out, you come right back. So don't even try to come back this time. You know what? Listen, if this is how you really feel, then get your shit and get to pack it. And so that's what she did. He go in the room, start putting shit up together. He talking in the meantime. Yeah, you ain't this. You ain't that. You ain't shit. You old ugly ass motherfucker. Like he was, and at that point, the, the producer was kind of like, okay, like you, you doing it. You, you, you didn't, you didn't showed your ass. We done caught you on tape. Smile, candy camera nigga. It's time to go. And so Shorty hit him with the, you came in trash bags, you gonna leave in trash bags. And all he could say on the way out was, bye, little ugly. And it's like, nigga, that's the, that's the, that's the most you can say. 
but I look ugly. Like, Kenneth is so immature, bruh. And then he in the confessional talking about, is it a chance that I could possibly wake up tomorrow and, and you know, call shawty, tell baby, you know, I'm sorry. You know, that's the old Kenneth, but not the new Kenneth. And I was like, boy, he showed pure Gemini at its finest. One side and another. Like, it, that, you can see why somebody would be scared. Like, first of all, he the stock shorty, her bank information, the her job. Like, he's literally shown everything of, like, he's somebody who's dangerous. And so, Sheree might have came on the show to have protection from him. Um, but what I also am wondering, too, is when the reunion happened, I wonder how his family felt watching Kenneth act a full ass like that. Because they definitely was trying to get on Shorty for calling them and saying this is how your son and brother is acting. But now, I wonder if they're going to still have the same sentiments when they see they family on national TV acting a pure motherfucking ass. Okay? I really wonder what their sentiments are going to be. Because let's just get it straight. Kenneth ain't shit. Ain't never going to be shit. He's blaming everybody else for why he's not successful. And when a woman decides that she, hey, nigga, your name ain't even on the lease so you can get the step in. And you, I've really been putting up with you. Um, you know, sometimes dudes got to have that, re that hard reality check of, oh, Damn, well, I heard I'm nothing. Right? Kenneth had his reality check just like Martel did. Martel, Martel had his and now Kenneth has his. And it's now it's like, y'all niggas really don't be understanding. Women be, women really be helping you niggas out. But <laughs> goodbye. Don't let the door hit you with a good Lord split you. So that's where the episode ended. So y'all tell me how y'all feel about Kenneth blowing up on Shorty. Um, and... Do you, what do you think is going to happen when that nigga realize he done fucked up? Y'all think he going to call Shorty back or nah? But I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Y'all stay tuned. I'm going to get to the other shows. Drop it down in the comments. Tell me how you feel about the episode. And I'll catch you guys later. Deuces.